Hey guys, Joshua Peterson with Peterson Electric. The second part to this video, I wanted just to talk about arc fault breakers. Um, so when we traced out this area, because we uh, brought those circuits down and, and executed them downstairs, just to get this power over here done. Again, these um, diagrams are really important. So we put the existing of how it was done and then the new wiring um, and how I junction this. So that way, if there's any questions, we know exactly how we wire that. We usually leave that with the customer. I can take some pictures and just put it on a file at my own house and on my computer. But right here is where we typically find problems with arc fault breakers. This, as I opened it up, does the porch. This right here does the living room switched outlet because there is no can lights. So a lot of you people from the East Coast that call me, uh, they still don't do can lights. They still, builders on Morgan track homes will always do a switched outlet, which still meets code, unfortunately. It's not the best way to have a light in the house with a lamp, but that switched lamp. So if you have one plug turned upside down, that's what it's there for. Anyways, when this was to, we opened this up, this is part of the garage circuit, which is circuit 15, and this is actually 13 this way. But in here, the neutrals could have been tied together, and it probably wouldn't have done any damage to the wiring, but the arc fault wouldn't set. So we made sure that these were separated from the two circuits. That's where we find our arc fault issue. The other area it could have been was over here. Well, right here is the power feed and the switch leg feed going to that light. So basically that would mean down below for you more seasoned wiremen is, the, is gonna be a dead-ended three-way, it's a dead end. So down here, what we found This one doing this, the stairway is a dead end. There's only a black, a red, and a white. That's it. There is no other second cable. This has one cable in itself as well, but that's a switch boot. So that's a black and a white. So now the code states that any time you do a switch loop in a house, you can't. You have to have a neutral there too. So that would mean you have to feed your black power down, your red back up for your switch leg, and leave a neutral there. They say it's for dimmers, but a lot of dimmers nowadays by Lutron is C.L. They don't need a neutral for them. But some dimmers do, and that's what the reason. Or the fact that later they may want to pop an outlet down below. They don't want you tempted to use your ground as a neutral. So now we have to pull a neutral 14.3 for switch loops. But anyway, so this was separated, and this is part of circuit 13, but this is 15 as well as it was at the front entry. But these two don't have the neutrals tied because they're basically switch loops. So there's no way it could pop. But as you can see in a living room like this, it is possible that circuits could share there. And it's usually in your switches. But one other place that it could happen is down in the basement. Let's say in this light box, I, and I did find a power in and a power out, and then I found my switch loop, and then a second switch leg that went over to this light over here. But let's say that there was a junction up there made kind of similar to what I did, and someone hung a light there. Sometimes people will mix their neutrals behind the light. So you always try to go in a basement and look for odd areas of splices, and that might help give you a clue too. But remember, go through your house, turn off all the circuits, and only keep on that one circuit that you're tracing in order to figure out where it jumps. And then you can set the second circuit, which would be your next circuit next to it, and sometimes you might have three circuits. So in this scenario, we could have had a basement circuit there, feeding a three-way, and up here, we could have had another stairway circuit, and then in this hall, there's another three-way. So right there could have been three circuits joining that one circuit to set that arc hole. And that's where you've got to figure out how to trace to get those neutrals separated. But don't forget to look in your panel and see if the neutrals are tied together there as well. I've seen people jumper them and put those neutrals together, tuck them up underneath behind other wires and put a pigtail to the neutral bar because they don't have any more space on the neutral bar. So make sure you look there too as well. Anyways, guys, thanks for joining us. Have a great week.